what is wrong with you people? Don't be a drunk. Don't have <laughs> sex with the waitresses. <laughs> eight years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But is it more peaceful not to bang the waitress and just squeeze one off? Yes. Because yeah. that waitress <laughs> is never marrying you and you never want to marry her because she's a dirty hose bag. <laughs> and then you got a hose bag. <laughs> not that being yeah. said, though, as a woman comic who used to very much enjoy a, a, a little uh, dalliance on the road, I used to bang a few security guards here or there. there They're dudes. <laughs> like, yeah, what are you going to complain? <laughs> so, yeah. You're listening to the Dear Buddies podcast. You will grow from boys into men. Whatever, dude. What does that look? Don't get weird on me. Hey, buddy. For all those questions you can't bring yourself to ask your friends, ask your buddies. Um, all right, cool, yeah. What's up, buddies? Welcome back to Dear Buddies. Um, uh, before we get started, I just want to say make sure that if you haven't already, please rate and review, subscribe us on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, all that stuff. Uh, leave comments, hit that notification uh, when you do subscribe. And then also uh, patreon.com slash Dear Buddies Podcast. We do a, a completely new episode every single week. Uh, the Sweet Buddies Podcast, which is our old podcast that we used to have, that which is in the, the top 15 podcast on iTunes that we quit for no reason. Uh, but please uh, check that out, dearbuddies.com, or I'm sorry, patreon.com, so I don't even know where I'm at half the time. We quit because you guys got girlfriends. That was the reason <laughs> why. Point, yeah, yeah, and we hated each other. <laughs> yeah. 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 We lived together and did a podcast. We hated uh, each other. Um, we, we know why. But yeah, uh, patreon.com slash dearbuddies podcast. We've got tons of fun stuff we do in there. Every week we do lives. So please, please make sure you check that out. That out of the way, I am very, very excited because we have a very fun exciting show but an even more exciting guest which i'm pumped about uh other than being a huge fan as i think every comic in the world in the, world would in be, the universe like who's probably ever no. lived and you know what uh <laughs> that is the harder truth. for that yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, you know, go ahead. Go no, on. no, I'm out of the roasting but business, so don't out, worry about I it. Printed out the, the don't be reading the resume. Oh, I'll read the little don't bit read resume. the resume. Just a little bit, a little the bit, half, one. half like of the it. The Apprentice. Uh, oh my God, <laughs> Celebrity <laughs> Apprentice. Celebrity. Not the Apprentice. Airports I'm not a complete loser. Was it, was it Donnie or is it Schwarzenegger? No, it's Donald. Donnie. Oh, you got before, original. Before, you, you, before you. it was insane. You got original. Yeah, yeah it was nuts. Twelve appearances on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Uh, Late Show with David Letterman, Howard Stern, which is really oh, exciting my favorite. because that's when you not... Well, I mean, you've really fallen from grace now that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is what I love. It's almost like I have to do some charity work once a month, and it's wow. usually appearing okay. on very low-rated podcasts, <laughs> and you'll laugh... But that's kind of true. Because no, how nice is it, is it of me to squeeze you in before I tape a real yeah. podcast in an hour? Yeah. Well, he is the size of a Make-A-Wish kid. So oh he is a cute little brown guy. I'm very interested in that ethnicity, if you will. I enjoy oh, that. I yes, enjoy that. Back. It's very Italian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He shaved it. He knows what's up. Uh, plus, all the Comedy Central roasts, which is where I think some of your most legendary uh, stuff comes from. And not to, to leave these out, last but not least, uh, co-star of such films as Delta Farce uh, and Layer the Cable Guy Health Inspector, Lisa Lampanelli. Quit bragging! Yeah. Best guest you'll ever have. Yeah. At we least till that. tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, well, you well, never know. We don't doubt that. <laughs> well, what an honor it is not to be here. No, no it really is fun. Business. I'll tell you something. I love doing guest appearances on podcasts. I got nothing else to do. I enjoy myself. You gave me a good vibe when you were in Connecticut. I didn't Thank hate you. you. I usually, seriously, I meet comics and I want to just throw up and eat a gun at the same time. I don't, you, I don't like, you're famous, but like, I don't tell people I'm a comedian. I, just, I never used I, to. And you know what Jim Florentine told me once? He goes, whenever you're on a plane, somebody asks what you do for a living, say, I sell insurance. Are you interested? Hilarious. And I said, that's a fucking <laughs> trick. But see, because yeah. I'm such a needy, like, or I was such a needy show whore, laugh whore, I always told them, and then the big insult is when they go, oh, I don't watch TV. Oh, yeah, you're busy at the library oh, and yeah, the opera. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I don't know you. And then you have to give your credits. Yeah, and uh, so you're all dirty, like, no. oh, it's awful. Well, you, want, you watch Comedy Central at midnight? Because I was on it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> there you go. The roast of Rob Lowe. I mean, that was the thing? 
He had a roast, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was the was saddest really, of all roasts, it was I would think. They had, um, it, was actually, it was hard. It's like, what are you going to do? The guy's perfect. <laughs> That's the thing yeah. about it. That's the problem. They had Kelly, Kelly Ann Conway, I think. I don't know. Who was the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. skeleton looking broad? Oh, Ann Coulter. Ann Coulter. Oh, boy. Oh, so it basically became a roast of her, which yeah, was good, very, very good. exciting. It got watch. awkward at some points. It was a little too me. Like, literally yeah. all the roasts are super awkward and super difficult, and they will never ever do one again i remember when i i said i wanted to announce my retirement yeah. and i asked stern if i could come on and do it and he's like yeah that's great i'll really give it full attention i'll really be non-jokey about it because but can you do like one final roast sure. and i was like sure so we did the roast of ronnie the limo guy so it was fantastic <laughs> yeah. and i'm like oh god i will never miss this again because it's like two months of really hard work. I, I can, I, I mean, even just like the roast that clubs do in the city and like, you do, like you're just roasting your friend. It's like awful. It's just panicking. I, panic I remember I writing, imagine being on TV. Doing a, yeah. Yeah. We did the roast battle and a friend Rosebud has a dead sister and I was writing a roast joke about her dead sister. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. this is not fun. I don't want to do this. <laughs> well, no, you know what's interesting about those roast battles? I had a judge one once, me and Norton, oh, and uh, I think it was Jay Farrow, I think. And it's just painful because if you're not an insult comic, and there are very few, yeah. you're not good at roast. You're just mean. Yeah. And the it, jokes come off if you don't have that love behind it. No one's paying to come see you. Yeah. So I never roasted anyone I didn't like because if you don't you roast like friends. them, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I, in other words, like they asked me if I would roast Charlie Sheen. I was like, no, he's going through a mental breakdown. It's insane. Also, I'm older, so I kind of had that moral thing of like, I don't need the money. I don't need to roast this guy having a breakdown. But I, I don't really nice like him. Money. Well, you know, I, I, you know, eventually you just got to go. How much is too much? Yeah, yeah. You know, Fair. but you don't want to like roast somebody because they'll see that tinge of anger in you. I'm not that good a freaking actor. You saw yeah, me in yeah. Larry the Cable Guy, health yeah. inspector. Nobody was buying that. So you know, it, it's a very interesting kind of dichotomy. But the roast really bl blew up, and now they yeah. have these these roasts where there's people you don't even you don't even know. And I had to do one uh, also with with someone I, uh, you know, an acquaintance. I'll yes, say. yes. And then we went, we we grabbed a coffee, and he was like, "Yeah, my mother had uh, polio when she was young," and I'm like. What's what's going on here? I'm learning. I know. About, about, I know. I'm learning about the weirdest stuff to make fun of a guy I don't care about. Well, it's that's very bizarre. That's what's interesting too, because um, I do a podcast. My podcast is called Losers with a Dream, and it's with these two comics, Nick and Bo. Well, they're involved in a freaking roast battle in two weeks, and they got to roast each other. So I said, "Listen," I said. You both know each other's flaws. If you need help, here's what you do. We go through my computer. All the fat jokes, loser jokes, and addict you jokes go for Bo. Yeah, yeah. The one, the dirty Italian <laughs> jokes, the grease ball, the, the bald, the can't get laid in a whorehouse, those go to Nick. <laughs> We're fine. We're all set. You don't need to stress. There's categories. Like, we don't have to try for this one. Like, yeah, I, I, know, like, I know this is exactly you as a person. It's not tough, you yeah, know? Exactly. That like so you so we're, what we kind of really wanted to talk about yeah. today, which is interesting and it, it fits perfectly with kind of the things that we talk about yeah which is is you've retired yeah and so the idea here is like how do you find new purpose and i think a lot of people can relate like at any point in time you retire from something it's like now what you spend your whole yeah. life and i think in comedy more specifically it's like it's not your job. It's like every waking moment of it's your, your life. Identity. It's, it's identity. your identity. It's your identity. But you know what? I think comics go into victim mode where they're like, it's harder for us because it's a calling. It's just as hard for the insurance guy who's been with the company for yeah, 30 yeah, years. Yeah. If you ever saw the movie about Schmidt with Jack Yo, Nicholson yeah, yeah. where he retires and the saddest moment is when he had prepared all the files for the new guy and he shows up just to say hi to them. And the pot, the the files are in the dumpster. Yeah. And you go, oh my god, my files are in the dumpster, which sounds like a porn, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> so, but the fact is, everyone, especially men, have a loss of identity when it comes to retirement. That's and what, any even and I bet even moms. I was smart enough not to give birth because ew, <laughs> and I, I would be a horrible mother. Well, so, take that check uh, off. The list. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there we go. But I think anyone who loses identity, it's hard. And yes, as a comic, if you have have identity, identified yourself as a comic first and foremost if comedian is your pronouns you're gonna have a yeah. tough time so my, i had a hard time definitely my dad worked since he was like 15 he's like I, i'll lose my mind that's right me and your mother will get divorced well I'll yeah see her. i'm lucky enough though that i live alone i have two yeah. dogs that i ignore and i think that's the way life should be <laughs> but for the first like three years it was like scrambling because when you say find purpose that's exactly not the way to do it what happens is you 
have to get rid of everything and then have it come in. So basically, if you're looking for purpose, it's just another thing that's not going to work and another thing that's not going to work. So I tried coaching. I tried, uh, you know, life coaching. I tried a podcast that I didn't like that much that required booking guests. I don't book guests. I don't care. Sure. I just want to yeah. talk. I'm yeah. freaking awesome by myself. Like, why yeah. do I need these douchebag guests? I say the same thing without them. <laughs> and I've listened and I have to agree yeah. with you. No, but so I think the whole thing is. You can't look for it, but it is so uncomfortable to be quiet and not search. Scopo, you had a good point today about like comedy. Like, how do you shut off? Like, going on stage is is important, obviously, if you're a comic. But just shutting off that thing in your brain that says, "Oh, that's funny. I have to tell that." Well, you that's don't difficult. retire from life. Like, yeah. I. But you do find that you're not as compelled to attention seek. Like, I have game nights like once a week or so with a bunch of friends. And I swear to God, I'm like, wow, how am I the quietest one in this room? And, you know, because it's just like I don't have that performance need anymore. Yeah. And I think it's just getting okay with yourself and going, oh, I don't really need anything outside me. I just need. But we still think funny. Like, okay, are we past the 10-minute curse limit? Because I just want to say rip, one thing. There's, there, there's, <laughs> no, the only reason I ask it is it's very specific. One of my opening acts, this gay guy, Frank DeCaro, was so funny. And we always saw how we just thought dirty all the time. Dirty, dirty. Like, it just it was natural. It mm -hmm. wasn't forced. So we looked it up. There's a condition called Witzel sucked, which is a German word. <laughs> if you look it up it now. sounds delicious. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. It literally means someone who is always, it's a mental thing where you just go to dirty. So the other day I had, like, one of my co-hosts on the podcast that him his friends they were all football players and stuff and a bunch of gay guys also over the house doing game nights well i said to him you ever hear of this thing called punt pass and kick this this competition they yeah, go yeah, yes yeah. i go don't you always think cunt ass and dick even these guys were like absolutely <laughs> not <laughs> so i always just think that that kind yeah. of like weird twisted thing. I go, so that doesn't leave. It doesn't go away. Do you not write it down anymore? Like do No, I figured I could access that at any time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's got that skill too. Yeah. Just oh, turn the switch on. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. My anything no, with the C word is fine. Like even as I was like in the ladies' room before we came on, I go, Well, I go, I guess these guys got a show called Three Pussies and I have a show called Two Pussies in a Con. You know, it's just like it just comes into my mind that way so, so i don't think like you lose it's a gift that keeps yeah. on giving well it felt like a curse to me but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i think you just don't um lose your essential personality and elements but i think you become more secure with the fact that you don't need to prove anything it, it, go ahead yeah. I, I was gonna say you made a point about guys having a, maybe a bigger problem with their identity like is, is there a certain like demographic not just men but maybe immigrants or or like boomers that have it even tougher when it comes to like well listen on? I try to ignore that immigrants exist <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you see I still think funny she still got it she got it baby she got it you were friends with Trump but no I literally I uh, think we're very privileged. Like anybody who's white, anyone. I have every privilege there is except male. So I never freaking complain. I have a sign in my house, as silly it is, it is never complain, never explain. And I got it originally because I was like, I'm never explaining a joke to anyone. I don't care if you're a Tonight Show booker. I don't care if you're a Montreal Comedy Festival. I don't give a crap because guess what? I'm not explaining myself, but then I don't get to complain if I'm not booked. Sure. So sure. I always had to like balance that. So I do have a lot of privilege, but yeah, I can imagine... I don't know. I think immigrants just work harder than the rest of yeah. us. You saw Hamilton. Due, yeah. They say immigrants, we get the job done. And I think at the end of their retirement, they're just like, oh, please, God, just let me freaking relax like some white devil. Yeah. I would feel that way. Yeah. That, it's interesting, too, the way you said, like, don't let the, don't look for the fault. Look, look, look for it. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's the sim similar advice I feel like everybody gets for almost anything else. Which yes. is, but it doesn't make sense to finding purpose after retirement, let it find you. Type it of has thing. to find it's the you. Same thing with yeah. dating or with like the job. Like, well, you know what? It's big you, as on? soon as you're looking for love, you're never going to find that. It always happens yep. when you're least, least expecting it, it which, which is, is such a just a fucking garbage thing to hear because you don't want to hear that right. ever. But it's always true. Well, we're always pushing. We're in this society. We're always pushing, pushing, pushing. The whole fact is, we should just be allowing. Yeah. And the thing wow. is, if you have a girlfriend, a boyfriend, whatever you got. 
it probably didn't happen because you were searching frantically when you were horny on Tinder. It just like kind of <laughs> usually doesn't <laughs> it, you, Okay, you're the rare exception, but it rarely seems to work out. But I think anytime we're pushing any agenda, it's not going to happen. I always say dating apps are for people just to kill time till the right one comes it's along. It's so no, true. Right. I used to, it's just I used a time to swipe, 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 swipe. Because yep. I was, you know what it was? I was done with Facebook. I was done with Twitter. I was done with Instagram. I go, okay, let's go to Bumble. There After you Bumble, go. Bumble, you go to Tinder. If the Tinder, you go to Hinge. Yeah. It's like to a point, it's like, I, I got to stop this. It's, I it's literally thought mind. Hinge was, is that straight? That's a straight. Oh, yeah. no, because there it used to be just gay. No. Yeah, years ago. Grindr. Really? I, no, no, no. Grinder's the one we're always effing. Yeah, they always just want yeah, yeah. to F. elite gay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, too, like, speaking of, like, Celebrity Apprentice, I'm telling you, here's how dumb they are. There was an assignment one week to create a, okay, think about the wording, viral video. You can't create a viral video. You put out a video and hopefully it becomes viral. Yeah, exactly. So, them being dummies, they don't know this. So it's like anything else, like social media. Mm -hmm. We can't create some post that magically gets, you know, 200,000 or 2 million likes or whatever it is. You just got to put out there what is in your heart and what you think is funny. And I'm telling you, somebody said to me once, if you think it's funny, they're going to think it's funny. So... There's a way to make the joke work, the video work that's mm. going to work out, but it's without forcing it. Comedy is the same way, though. When you think something, like when you force something, it doesn't work. When it comes naturally to you, and then is you it? Could you tell me about how comedy works? So, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I no, just, you're right. Just, well, I just, I just, I just, I just, no, no, I, I love you, well, man. Well, oh, yeah, exactly. It sucks. <laughs> no, no. You know what's to be great? fair, there's only you're not a comedian. So uh, that's true. That's uh, true. That's true. You're right. It's true though. Like no, he's right. When you force shit. It's, it's just, awful. It's just you up there. No, you're like this ain't me. I know this is not me, and it sucks. <laughs> and you're ashamed. Get... Oh, oh yes, because you're dying as someone else. The it fact sucks. is, I remember practice. Like I was auditioning for a Showtime at the Apollo or something, and my, <laughs> I mean, they wanted all the crazy insult stuff, but I was like, I'm gonna play it safe because they're black. Uh, no, Why do you think no, they freaking wanted me to do it? The opposite. Yes. Of what you're saying. Years yeah. ago, that's what they wanted. Not now, but well, like, years ago it was like oh my god why didn't she say this why didn't she that and i go oh boy i tried to force being someone i'm not so it's always just better to fail as yourself and you know Truly. after observing you three i can tell you will fail <laughs> as yourself as and i appreciate that <laughs> When did you become like a, a roast comic? Because that you didn't start out as a roast comic. No, I always said that like nobody ends up where they start. So basically, like Roseanne didn't say to herself, you know, back when remember she was huge oh, for yeah. a while, and it was like she didn't like go to her first open mic and say, "I'm going to be the domestic goddess." It just yeah. develops. Mm. So what happened is what I loved doing crowd work, like to the extent that literally sometimes I do 45 minutes and not even have a joke. So I just Love loved it. crowd work, but then I noticed I didn't like them talking back. So I like just <laughs> saying things and being, and they didn't ever get really mad. And I'm like, oh, that's cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then what happened was back in the old days, we would have a cassette recorder in, or a cassette player in the car. So on the way home, I would find I was only laughing at my stuff if it was crowd work or insults. Like I would be like, oh, jokes are fine, it's fine, whatever, whatever. And then I'd be cracking up. So I'm like, oh, you gotta go where, where it's warm. And then I was like, oh, I can do that. And I started, thank goodness, after years performing at the Friars Club. Yeah. And they were they put me up for that first roast I did, which was Chevy Chase. So thank goodness it just took off. But dude, it was like a not, again, a lesson in not forcing what mm -hmm. you think they want, but doing what you in your gut and soul well, want. Yeah. What was your act like b before you were just ripping people apart? Yeah, like, it was just kind of normal, but it was like about me. Dirty, in, with dirty? No, it's just like corn. I mean, I'm not clean nor dirty. Interesting. I remember we watched me and the podcast guys watched my first open mic ever because it was really good. And of course, you bomb like <laughs> no, that you, happens a lot. Though. Yeah, like your and your first show, you just you have adrenaline cooking. But I noticed the one ad lib I did because you know you write your little five minutes yeah, yeah, yeah. in the comedy class you write and to then the you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. To rehearse for a break. And I still planning. stand by one of my jokes back then because even Jim Gaffigan was like, Lisa, that is my favorite joke of all time. And I'm like, oh, cool. So I had something. But I noticed the one ad lib I did, I noticed on the tape, two guys in the back high-fived at the ad lib. And I was like, oh, 
I got to start noticing this. So even with purpose, it's like you just start noticing your life. Yeah. Like I started noticing I wasn't happy doing comedy anymore. I started noticing I hate travel. I hate being away from home. I'm like, oh, you start, you get off the hamster wheel and notice, and then you go, I don't have to do this anymore. Like, why do I have to? Did I sign a contract? Yeah. It's like, was there, no. Is there, was there like a, a progression, like you yeah. said? Or was there yeah. one moment you were like, I think I want to stop doing this eventually? Or was it just kind of like, you're in an airport and you're just like, this sucks. No, I think I should have noticed earlier, but I think the seed was planted when, okay, I got really, really lucky. I did Carnegie Hall. And that is where I went. I went on Stern to promote that. That yeah. you know what you do is you Live Nation is like, okay, go on Stern the day of the we sale. We, we have yeah. 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 Well, they yeah. tell you yeah. you go on and you promote tickets on sale now. It's an agent. Yes, yes, yes. I will let you know later. I'll write a syllabus and a glossary That'd like yeah. like we're watching Dune. Copy Bible Part Two. Yes, yes. So I don't say cunt. No, never. Just one per show. So we have uh, Carnegie Hall on sale. It sells out really fast because of the stern appearance. So Live Nation calls my manager and goes, uh, there's a lot of tickets left on the table. There's a lot of money out there. We've sold that out so fast. I bet you could do Radio City in three weeks. Excuse me, three months from then. So I tell my, I say, sure, because I yeah. fucking want that yeah. money. That's a good call. 6,732 seats. I'll never forget that number. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I have them put it on sale. And of course, the greatest thing is my Yenta of a mom. I tell her about it and she goes, oh. How are you going to sell all those tickets? Yeah. So that's why I'm funny because of her. I'm like, thank you. So what happened was the, that sells out too, thank God. So what happens is I'm backstage and this is when I should have noticed that, oh, this is never going to be enough. I get off stage. It was so much fun. And the head of comedy at Live Nation is backstage and he goes, oh my God, next Madison Square Garden. And I literally deflated uh, it wasn't Jesus. like that and it, he to meant it as a total compliment but i heard it as you'll never be good enough yeah, yeah, yeah. it's never going to be enough and i think that's when it started percolating that several years wow. later oh that was a long time ago that was like you know 15 years oh wow so you, there's been it's been like a, a was brewing runway of, yeah, yeah so i so the then highlight, started noticing oh. things the was highlight like a, of the night was oh my me God. feeling like shit. <laughs> so, wow. And it wasn't his fault. I mean, he meant it as no, a compliment, yeah, yeah. but it's how we hear things. Was that a highlight in your career? That's what I'm saying. That, that was one of oh, them. Oh, I loved that Were you like, Radio you, City. Were, you felt like you were ramped to the top, and then you're like, fuck. Yeah, and I still had to keep going and going yeah. and do more Tonight Shows and do more roasts and do more specials and wow. the HBO special and this and that. And I'm like, oh, my God. And uh, do you, do I you, think... Quick, do you find yeah. the people put that pressure on you or you put your pressure, that pressure on I think we all you? do it to ourselves. You do it Because a totally yeah. grounded person who was raised to like themselves <laughs> is not going to feel pressure from anyone. First of all, they're not no, doing no. comedy. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> the it's like, part, yeah. I was like, wow, why did I end up yeah. this way? Holy but shit. I think what's good is you can keep like noticing going oh well that doesn't feel very good like flying all over i'm like yeah. oh boy why do i always get really happy when i'm headed home why am i kind of going i wanted to quit before it started showing on stage okay. so what happened was my father had passed away and I felt really good because I helped take care of him at home and this and that. I think it's because he passed away. No, <laughs> no, thank God that was the one person I didn't want to oh. die. And uh, that's also I feel like that could be an issue with you specifically, right? Hanging out, just have talking stories. Is it my, I was like, oh, this is gonna be good. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, 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 and let me tell you how great that. This like, might have been. Great, yeah. This will be a huge disappointment to you. <laughs> no, so I noticed I really liked being home, and I didn't like you know I like the element of service, taking care of somebody. So I call my business manager and I'm like, look, man, I said, I want to sell. I, I had a downsize, you know, a bunch of places and this and that. I go, when will I have enough to retire? Like, so I never have to work again because I don't want to be stupid either. And he goes, like two years if you really sell that big house. So I said, oh my God, fuck that big house. I hate that big house because <laughs> it was an empty house. Yeah, yeah, Me yeah. and 15 pound of dog is not meant <laughs> yeah. to be in that big of a place. It's stupid plus apartment in New York. I said, let me get rid of this. Oh my God. It was the best thing. That's when we started engineering the, the you know, the stern the thing and this and that. Yeah, and yeah. It was really badass because no one retires. Yeah. You know, Daniel Day Lewis and me. Not a yeah, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a mafia guy getting out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It exactly literally it felt is. so freeing because I was like, oh my God, I freaking. But then there's that struggle of, well, what do I do? And not even with your time, because everybody yeah. can cobble together hobbies and stuff. But 
you guys know when you're a comic, you don't have hobbies. Yeah. Nobody's sitting in a hotel room needlepointing uh, waiting for the <laughs> yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Like, we didn't develop no, anything you're... other than this obsession with getting attention. And sitting exactly. in hotels. So yes. I'm learning to do other stuff. Besides, you good. To, to like, instead of just, you know, we're working on jokes, I have, I have a dog, so I walk him. Good. Constantly. You good. walk your dog. You've learned how to do that. Yeah. I'm yeah, proud yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah. No, honestly, I'm proud of you. No, it's good to like just get out for a half hour, 45 minutes and just clear your mind. And well, it also COVID keeps you in the present. A moment yeah. because the fact is when you're with a dog a kid what an old person you got to be like right there for them yeah. so it's like whoa i can't really be always thinking of like what's my next thing oh my man let's plan let's plan you get hit by a car tomorrow how about live for this moment but that's very exactly. hard yeah. I, I, know I know a lot that of people when they retire they talk about how like they miss the certain things or the, the the schedule or the routine and it gets difficult for a lot of people to like a lot of times people will say um, if he retires, he'll die. If she retires, yeah. she'll die type of yeah. thing. Um, what what was like the hardest, or was there a hardest part of retiring as a comedian mm -hmm. when it's nonstop, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for 30 right. plus years? going to Cleveland four times a year. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Oh, I, may. I think it was like, okay, first of all, there's a weird adjustment where you call your business manager literally every week and say, did I spend too much? Because yeah. money's not coming in, but it's going oh. out. But you saved a lot, so who gives a sh He's mm. always like, I will tell you because me, I'll I'm like, you. that was that $59 on the Amazon too much. You know, it's just stupid, but it's just a mindset. But the it's other, how you were raised your whole of life. Of like, you know, I got to make money. I have to make right. money. I have to make money. And now you have men not making money. You're like, Oh shit. You want to hear a funny money thing Let's though? Dude? Oh, this boring. is yeah, we don't have this, this is so funny. Anything money. Tell us. Okay. Yeah. This What's is it like to have some. <laughs> no, it's, it's really nice. American no, money? Is it but American you know, money? What's cool about it, it about this, the, the story is about loss which I think is great because every comic or actor feels like they deserve everything. And like nobody's owed anything. No one deserves anything. It's all entitlement. So I remember I get cast sight unseen to do Despicable Me 3 as the new villain. This is years about five years ago, six years ago. That's pretty incredible. So I do, do I tape. We go to L.A. Yeah. I, the, the, the director's in Paris on the Zoom thing. And I'm nailing it and I'm killing it. So I'm like, wow, that's really great so like three weeks later we get a call they want you to do it again <laughs> so instantly i'm like oh i'm not this, they don't want me anymore yeah yeah and so i got an acting coach i had her come in because you know with animated you're reading to right. no one mm -hmm. she did the lines while i did them and i go as i'm doing i go that they're casting someone more famous like i just know in my gut so i go okay so i I remember, I'll never forget where I was. I was driving in my town in Connecticut, making a U-turn to go to the post office. My manager calls. I go, let me guess. I'm fired from Despicable Me 3. She goes, yeah. She goes, do you care? I go, no. And she goes, why not? You're never disappointed over big things. I go, I'm too busy micromanaging little things. And I'll yell at someone at the post office, but I'm not going to be disappointed about this. The money part comes in. Dude, I still get effing residuals from Despicable Me 3. I don't know why. why? You weren't in it though, right? I guess because I taped and they committed and what? I got fired. Uh, and I'm like, that is bad ass. So guys, my, the lesson is do your worst at everything, get fired, and keep that money. That is the Lisa Lampanelli way That's to do business. Put that same on. thing. Hired first. Yeah, no, yeah, how do you do that? Yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, first. But the same thing happened. I remember they booked me. Get this. What? Under Army, Under Armour, whatever that thing is. They, <laughs> under, yeah, under, yeah, under, under, under Army. Yeah. They. I think it's called the Marines. There's under always, like, by the way, there's always some gay guy who thinks everyone's gonna like my comedy at their company. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm getting fired from this too, but I take it anyway. So. It was supposed to be like I think it was like you know I don't talk numbers but this one I can because it didn't happen. Fifty grand, me and John Legend. Well, this is not going to happen in my uh, mind because I, I'm like, yeah, 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 you know, I'm like, how could this even be possible? It's like of Chappelle course, mayor. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. So the event's coming up, and they go, hey, they decided the powers that be that you can't do that. That it's you're too politically incorrect. I go, that's okay, and they had to pay me anyway. That's I that's am a dream. telling you, that's a dream. Staying home, 
you, you almost look at it as kind of an insult, like they're paying me to not go on to this event, but you go, fuck it. Yeah, also, it's Under Armour. They've got a little bit of Hello. cash later. I think about that all the time, though. Like, if I show up to a gig and then it gets canceled and I'm still getting the money, I'm like, that's better than the gig. Dude, like, I used to amazing. want it to get canceled. Like, I would show up at gigs. Well, Who wouldn't, though? Well, when you're, when you're really established and you're doing theaters and you really want to make those overages and stuff, yeah, yeah. you don't want people to not show up but there were some club dates that i was like oh please jesus christ let it not show up i hate comedy five dollar spot in san diego i don't That's blame exactly it. what i mean hey <laughs> i used to exactly hope I mean. no one would show up the, for those things you get the cash you're already there you get the cash if you don't have to do the a set. yeah, yeah the rule is if you're hundo. there or on the way they give you the cash no 100 percent, and, yeah. and rightfully so it's an effort you're making also there's this really um the type i love to save money I'm not a big spender anymore. I just know that it really is kind of meaningless. It's just good to live a simple life. But I always, when I do any little show, I would just turn over the money. So if I'm doing the moth and they're paying you like $100, it's a freaking nonprofit. Yeah. Turn it over yeah. so you feel good about yourself. So any club in the city, if I was practicing for a special or something, I'd never take that 25 or whatever it was. Oh my God, there's a comic. Okay, my ex husband oh, Jimmy Big Balls <laughs> works at Was Gotham as yes, <laughs> uh, works at Gotham as yeah, a yeah. door guy. He's a great guy. We're still friends. That's your that's your ex husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that? yeah. yeah. Big He's boy, right? Right? yeah. yeah. Well, he Man. wasn't yeah. as big when I had him. So <laughs> <laughs> he told he me he's gonna choke slam somebody out. Here. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He, no, I always strong. watch him if I'm on stage. I'm like, who's he gonna who's he gonna yell at? Who's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I like that. I like that he was very protective. That was probably the draw of it. Gotham's a comedy club. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. it's this thing that <laughs> comics play. In. So he told me about a very famous female comic who came to do a spot on some charity thing and would not leave and was yelling at the bartender, give me my money, mother effer, and all that stuff. And I get now that it came from scarcity and she was probably the psychology of growing sure. up being cheated mm -hmm. and racial stuff and everything yeah. like that. But she's a big cunt. And <laughs> not because of that, because she, she shit all over me on a TV show. Because I was like, well, what I do? I don't even know you. Yeah. And so I was so secretly happy to think she wants that $25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm, okay, bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Evolved party of none. <laughs> Has there been anything that you've bought since retiring that you're like, fuck, I don't have the money for this? No, no, because I'm no, really, no I'm a no, minimum. manager's going to call her. Say, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I told that. him, I said, you got to call me. What's funny is, my business manager now i mean he handles a lot of really really this is what cracks me up he handles, he handles like marvel guys like he handles like huge and i go to him dude i'm really sorry you got me at the retirement yeah. point he goes no i just love you i love you so much i turned him on to my niece who has a podcast it's always in like the top six comedy ones so they're big big earners and uh so he manages their money she has the same thing i do where she goes I'm, I'm, am I spending too much? Because they made it too young. Yeah. So they're like 27, okay. having millions of dollars. And I go, Leo will tell you. <laughs> like, there's no way a business manager shouldn't call you and say, hey. So when you ask me about spending, I'm generous, but not to a fault. It used to be to a fault. Mm. And the reason that expression exists is because you can be loyal to a fault, anything to a fault. I used to feel I had to buy everybody everything not big gifts and stuff but just like oh let me buy the whole dinner for the you take care of the Oprah, yeah. 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 yeah yeah oh That's my god nice of you to the openers always stayed at the peninsula or the waldorf or wherever i stayed mm. and the the freaking openers would all say to me you know this doesn't happen all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, sure. hey, I'm no hero, but the fact is I want you to get my coffee. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, it, no, is, uh, it does make you feel a little better to get a coffee when someone's like, he paid for the whole meal like 20 minutes ago. Yeah, You're like, I'll, yeah, I'll get coffee for you. Oh, Don't 100%. Worry about it. Yeah. 100 oh, bread. It's on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 yes. But you know what I found out too? I think it's really interesting because all my, I don't have like friends who are celebrities and stuff. It's mostly just normal folks. And I find it interesting what, triggers up in me when the bill comes not jumping and paying it because i think that's really comes from the wrong place of like oh yeah. I, i'm the big shot it's like they have to get the lesson that they need to pay equally and that's hard because you don't want to seem cheap you're twice their age i'll pay for my nieces and nephews everybody else can go f themselves sure. learn the lesson that you got you're not entitled is yeah. it better not dealing with famous people now well, you just no, I just never really. I was never that person who made friends with celebrities. Like okay. I didn't ignore them and stuff. But I remember like Kathy Griffin came to my shows a bunch of times. Amy Schumer was so nice. But I was like, when we we were friendly, 
but not friends. Sure. So I'm not going to, that's not going to really grow if I'm not in the business anymore. Yeah. Is there, has there been any um, offers that have come in since you've retired? Like, that you've, like to go back to like do one show for oh, this oh. much money and you're like, fuck, yeah, has I the gap just called one you? more show. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, no, Rose I just Rupert's ignore, I, I, she knows to turn down anything comedy related sure. and roast related. But like I did, I shot a pilot right after people were allowed to film after COVID. Oh, okay, so recently. And but this is how I am too. Like I know it ain't going anywhere. <laughs> I'm like I'm doing it as a favor to these guys. It's fun, probably. They, yeah, it's yeah. dumb. Yeah. And here's how I judge it: Do I have a lot of lines to memorize? Because I'm so awful at memorizing. If there's like 20 lines, I'll do it. If it's a scene steal, I'll do it. Like I did like a community theater thing where I had one song because I, I can sing. And I'm like, but I don't want to memorize. So in other words, I just do anything that I know it sounds super like, wing, but if it feels cute and warm, I'll do it. But if it sounds, if any heaviness is attached, I'm like, you're, no. You're done. Like, it's I gotta all call, about your mental, it's like your mental health. Oh my and God. Like just staying I know happy. mental health is like such a cliche now. And I, thank God, but didn't have any though, severe right? mental health. So, oh, yeah. yeah. But it's like, okay, Rob Schneider. Okay, listen to this. I, have I love never... how, by the way, she's talking about how she doesn't have any celebrity friends. She's like, well, hey, yeah. 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 No, 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 they're oh, not friends with me. No, I'm not friends. She no, they, 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 they came to Nothing shows. Show up. She's like, I'll do this podcast. No, no, no. They came to shows, and I thought that was very, very nice of them to do that. After but, this time with the one about Obama. That's okay, right. He is a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that wife. What a cunt. Uh, no. no I but, love, by the way, that you're, you're staying F, Fers, F you, F this. Yes, but, you, but, but cunt has to go. There's no way that could ever. I hate when people say C word, the F bomb. Oh, you fuck would do well mother. in Europe. <laughs> yeah. I hate that shit. You, I went to Europe. They fucking say cunt like it's a oh, drop no, it's of water. The best. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. The best. I have a funny it's Europe. Wait, I'm going to tell you my Rob Schneider yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. Only because it's ridiculous and shows you can't look for anything. Okay, so I literally, my poor mom, she passed away in April. But what happened was I'm coming out of the assisted living and she's not in great shape. And there's like an LA call and I'm not like fancy. I don't know anybody in LA really except my management and stuff. So I call and I swear to God, I hear just the beginnings cut out and it says Snyder, blah, 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 blah. So I go, oh, it's D Snyder because we did The Apprentice together. <laughs> and he's really nice. Twisted sister. Yeah. Hilarious. So he's a great guy, nice guy. So I listen to it again. I say, well, why would D Snyder be saying call me? That's weird. So I listen and he goes, hey, it's Rob Schneider and blah, blah, blah. I want to talk to you about a part in, in a movie I wrote. So I'm like, you know, let me get in a distraction from my mom being sick. So I call him and I'm like, how did you get my number? Like, this is so random. And he's like, oh, I got it from our agent. And I'm like, we're not the same agent, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to fire that agent. It literally was the worst budget you have ever seen in your life. But I read the script and it was super cute. And I said to my manager, well, you know what? Like, why don't I just do it? It's cute and fun. She goes, I don't care. She goes, you can do it. Yeah. And it was awful money. But just the fact that I had maybe 10 lines, he considered it a mitzvah, as the Jews say. Yeah. I thought that was, so that's yeah. the way to kind of go, oh, that's what I want in my life. More of that warm feeling than, well, if it can't meet my quote, who the fuck cares? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's again, not that we're, it, seems, it sounds like that there's so many, sayings that are true and it's like oh, you know when you find out that your parents were right the whole time yes. like, it's like oh god damn it mm -hmm. ha be ha like search for happiness yeah. if it makes you happy do it 100 percent. it's like oh, but, what's a simple stupid thing but it's like oh there there it is no it but dude one time. caution to that is we have mixed up the word happy with peace meaning okay it can make me happy to eat a whole cake every me night too. But I'd probably gain all that weight back and it'd be like I'd be in, you know, such a bad shape physically or whatever. So I think instead of saying go after happiness, because we don't, that really sounds so mm. difficult to define. If our overall state that we want is peacefulness, which everyone, it always boils down to contentment, peace, calm. Then I sort of know where to go. Do you see? Yeah, peace is a really interesting way to to manipulate that to, to actually yeah. make more sense. Like. Because happiness is... Because some guy could go, hey, I'm happy smoking just... pot every day, or I'm happy being a drunk. 
Yeah, well, then be a fucking drunk loser. Yeah. Like, I always say to these comics, I go, what's wrong with these comics? I'm such a prude. I'm always like, I gave a speech at Gotham, that, that club you'll never play. And uh, no, I, I joke, of course. So I'm true. sure you're not. No, 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 it's not. No, 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 I'll put in a good word for you. Um, uh, no, but husband. I did. You don't. You're going to have to spell my name because they don't know it. Oh, no. Anyway. No, but I did a, a little seminar for them once to beginning comics, and it was like, 50 people in a room and I'm just like, what is wrong with you people? I go, don't be a drunk. Don't have <laughs> sex with the waitresses. You, you don't. Easier said don't, than done. Yeah, yeah, no. I need you eight years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop with we the We could have used you in 2020, uh, uh, 2012. And I, I get have a couple of clubs I featured at that I no longer feature. <laughs> see? Yeah. See? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. can't yeah. block yeah. yourself out of a career. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I acknowledge <laughs> I'm a big prude who oh just kind of does the job and goes home. But I just think like comics will do anything to distract. And if they think that's what makes them happy to avoid their feelings, they're going to go after happiness. But is it more peaceful not to bang the waitress and just squeeze one off? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. that waitress is never <laughs> marrying you and you never want to marry her because she's a dirty hose bag. <laughs> and then you got to <laughs> hose bag. <laughs> not to slut shame. But then you got to walk, yeah, you know, walk in. Nice, nice Do you like that there. disclaimer? <laughs> you got to walk in and go, hey, what's up? I haven't talked to you in the couple of hours. No, it's a and tough, then, yeah. it's tough. That being yeah. said, though, as a woman comic who used to very much enjoy a, a, a little, uh, dalliance on the road. I love talking like I'm in the 18th century. Um, I used to bang a few security guards here or there. there you go. Get a tight. Yeah, married one. What are they? They're dudes. Like, yeah, what yeah, are they yeah. going to complain? <laughs> so, yeah. Don't get your dick wet. Uh. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I don't know how we got there, but we did. Well, don't like. get your dick wet unless you're a security guard and unless Lisa's a Yes, yes, retirement. there you go. Oh, I we didn't search for it. It yeah. came to us. Yes, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. You're a security guard, not wet. Staff, that could be a difference. Always. Big difference. That well, they're hot, difference. man. Security guys. Are... Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I'm celibate. I'm pretty asexual now, but I will tell you, back in the day, those guys were freaking hot. I didn't care. I was like, yeah. <laughs> that was the first purr on our podcast. No, that was a good time. I know. Oh, there you go. Give us a clause. I like yes, that. There you go. <laughs> oh my god. The, um, like you, how how long uh, did you retire before? Was it before the pandemic? Pandemic, what a year before oh no i think it was like two years before two and years get before. this i always say i canceled myself before i could get canceled because right <laughs> after i retired done, yeah. i did was yeah. starting to be like rough it so was. thank god that wasn't a thing still like rough. i was still doing the freaking jokes like the yeah. crazy shit when you know every word in the language this and that i knew i had a point why i was doing it but yeah i was lucky enough to how step would you out responded to someone coming at you though like how would you we'd be like uh, probably the wrong way back yeah. then, yeah. and I'd do it the right way now. What would, which would the right would, way be I, now? For me, it'd be, I'm so sorry. Really? Oh, my God. Not I'll, like really you, like I can't believe you. But no, like no, I'm really sorry that hurt wow. you. Because I wouldn't respond to a group. I've said on Wendy Williams when I retired, because she and I had added over the N-word, and I'm uh, not on her show or anything, but she called me out. And I'm like, maybe that's why she doesn't have many celebrity friends. Yeah, that could be it. At least only white ones. But uh, you know the good ones. I've always, like said, more more. I've, always, I've always said Wendy's one of the good ones. <laughs> Just kidding, JK. JK. Come on, You lean in. No, what I said when I retired, I said, look, if any person emails me twitter whatever the f it is and they're like you hurt my feelings and that really i'd love to talk about it i would absolutely freaking apologize because in life we don't want to hurt anyone yeah. suppose i said something about him i want that fucking shirt yeah. <laughs> it's a post like his dead father gave him the fucking jar <laughs> Don't read my lips, but that's a fucking terrible shirt. <laughs> but suppose got headphones on, Lisa. Oh uh, yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm joking. You're doing great. You're doing great. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but suppose God forbid. I had no idea. It was cute. Uh, it was kind of cute. He's still got But like, if it suppose that was something that his father wore, and he, he can say to me that hurt me. 
I'll be like, dude, I'm really sorry. Because it is regrettable. But the fact is, a group, you can't apologize to a group. Right. Like I said on Wendy, I said I will never be like, I'm sorry to all the gays, even though I freaking earned you so much money on The Celebrity Apprentice, $180,000 for you homos. <laughs> Calm down. No. Yeah. So it's really like... I don't ever mind a nice discussion about that. That's really cool. That's because you know you the queen of mean was kind of like your the, the well sure, but that's why moniker. but that's why they came back to the show several times because they knew I didn't course. mean it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. There, sure. we've always seen that comic who you know kind of means it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And that, in the city. Yeah. And there's <laughs> and you know what they always I always said you could pick them out because they make fun of one group. Right. And I'm like. If every joke of yours is not mm. racial except the Asian stuff, there's <laughs> that, 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 that's a thing. But yeah. I think you always had such a great like I think so many people understood that you, like we were all in on the joke of with course. you. Of course. And yeah. look at Rickles. Because you were always so like you exactly. were so fun yeah. about it. And so I mean look, we all had have meltdowns and I'm sure there's plenty of times where you just Oh, were, like, I freaking like, went, went off on. two days before no, my second to last show uh, before I retired. I was like, oh, God, I have one more show left. One more. Thank God. And I melted down on this guy. It's on the internet. It's was it a, freaking was it horrifying. Theater? Did you walk yeah, into the huge. crowd? Oh, yeah. That, that San Jose one was oh, big. That's what yeah. we, we, that, we that, at first, came up. We were like, oh, yeah. We were no, like, oh, I wonder if there's anything. Like, when's the last time she'd stand up? And that popped. I was like, oh, I don't know if I should bring that up. Well, no, <laughs> I, I, have, I used to have shame about it. And then I realized what, why I melted down. The guy, Okay, listen. This is second to last show. I'm sorry. Second to last okay. show. Like, it was all about to be wrapped up and go on stern. Yeah, just put their microphone in the Raptors. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh my God, it was so bad. Okay, there was a, I had gotten, you know, done a lot of work on myself. So the last three or four years, I was much nicer to the audience. I mean, I did the insult comedy, sure. but I'd be like, oh, do you want to move up front or whatever? Like, I was just kinder. So <laughs> there was a woman, it was big San Jose theater. <laughs> to move up front. I was kind. Do you well, want no, me no, to no, be, no, I mean, you me to be a, a meaner to you at a closer no, distance? No, I just Come mean if up. somebody couldn't see or somebody was yelling or whatnot. <laughs> or if you couldn't see what color their skin was. Well, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I could usually, if they smiled, I could yeah. tell. Um, <laughs> you, you were going there. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I got it. No, but there was a woman who, like, literally had was on crutches had a broken leg or something and a guy behind her was always and just yelling and stuff and i was like oh my god this poor woman so i said to her i go hey do you wanna i go walk up here i said don't worry about it take your time and that's when the guy yelled. she was taking too long for him so he yelled tell jokes and by the way i don't take orders well and he says tell jokes yeah f and whatever LL had to freaking show who's boss. Wow. Because you know when I'm talking about myself in the third person and initials? Yeah. It's rough. Yeah. So I'm like thinking to myself, I'm about to retire and this motherfucker's going to go. This is the San Jose incident? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I go show. back and I'm screaming in his face. I'm like, don't you? Man? And he's going back and forth. And, and so I go, I go, why don't I just pay back your ticket? Why don't you just, I'll pay. I, I, and I always wished I had like 40 bucks on me just to, to just to do that. I thought feeling, that's a good yeah. move. Yeah. But I didn't have cash that night and i was like damn and then he's like i'll give you 20 bucks to shut the f up or whatever and got to think i threw them i go you know what i already did now y'all fuck your mothers or whatever i threw the mic and i left and i said that was fantastic <laughs> so here i am it, but i love i loved it and but here i am having no shame about it because i knew i was right but get this then tmz gets a hold of it and tmz and i are friends i've guest hosted that show they call me they go dude we know you didn't really like give a shit about this. You want to come on and do a funny rebuttal, which I did. Then unfortunately a very famous female comedian who has to always gravitate towards trouble is like sticking up for me on Twitter when there's nothing to stick up for. Cause like, I already no, addressed yeah. it. And she's like, I'm anything to demonize women comics. And oh, I'm like, you battle axe, stop uh. it. And by the way, <laughs> no one cares. Well, yeah, she was a horse bag and bad yeah. <laughs> Put them up on some on the wall somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These She's selling your money. Pockets. You should sell those. We should. Yeah. Yeah. She went, relax, yeah. I'll buy one. But this bitch is a war horse from way back. So I'm like, why are you doing this? These are amazing. But, but I'm like, let it go away. So I was like, dude, I already dressed it. Don't worry about it. It was funny. TMZ's on my side, but she's crapping all over TMZ saying they're only doing it because I'm a woman. I'm like, no, it's not. It's because we're friends. Stop it. Like, literally, I've been on the show. So I don't want to make her mad because she's doing it from the good place, she thinks. 
I you get don't a call. Say her name right into the no, camera, never, you? never. Okay, but sure, Warhorse sure, sure. and Battle X oh, narrow it down. Keep those coming. Uh, Listen, Wendy Williams. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, then I get a call from a way more famous woman comic who I don't even know why she has my number, and she's like Lisa, and I saved the message. I still have it. Um, so and so Battle X name here <laughs> wants me to post in support of you, but. I will do whatever you want because I think the more we ignore these things, the quicker it goes away. And I was like, oh my God, you're so smart about the business. That's why she's not a war horse or a battle axe. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it went away. But I was just like, what a bummer of a way to kind of like, like sully that last two performances. Yeah. But also you what know? a great kind of way to go out. Like I you guess went so. out the way you wanted to. What was like, the last like, one? You, don't just give me shit. regular show. <laughs> how'd, it feel? how'd it feel? Didn't care. Couldn't wait. Really? I was wow. like, yeah. No, because here's how I am. And I think you guys can use this in life and your listeners, the five of them, will really <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's pretty good. My Do, mom don't... and aunt listen, so it's seven. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 seven yeah, yeah. We're at seven now. <laughs> don't leave anything until you know you don't want to look back. So I always know when I'm ready. So basically, I sold this big house two years ago. My sister says to me, who's a big Yenta, I love her, but she's a big Yenta. She goes, have you driven by the house to see what they're doing to it? I go, why I sold it, I don't care. <laughs> That's such an old Italian thing that yes, my family uh, does that. Yeah, my family yeah, yeah. does that all the time. They love that. And I'm like, I don't care. I like my house now. And so I, I go, leave before you hate it and when you're ready and then you don't look back. So I always, like me and Jimmy got a divorce when we, so we could still be friends. I wow. sold the house when I didn't like it anymore. Before you hate anything, get out. That's and that's smart. how comedy felt. Like I don't hate it yet. I'm gonna hate it. Were you? Were you like? How? how like? Were you raised like that? No, like, I did so worked? much work on myself. I've been going to the shrink on and off since I'm 25, and I'm okay. 77 years old. I look good for 77. Great. You look great. I know. Great skin. No, I'm I, 60. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, Stop 35. It. Yeah, cut it out, girl. I believe you're 77. Okay, <laughs> I would be gonna, nice. <laughs> by the way, I'm gonna. No, it's all this self help, spiritual workshop, mm. like just every kind of thing I could do to become a decent human being because we were raised okay like i had good parents but they were depression era they had a lot of scarcity issues they had rage problems you know so you nobody yeah, was era, raised by anybody perfect that era didn't help themselves they didn't like go to th i went i no. my dad started to go to therapy because i almost got to a fight with him and hit him and he was like oh i gotta wow. work on myself a little wow. bit yeah so it was like that was the first time he, anyone in my family's been to therapy besides wow. me how old's your dad 68. See, that's the age group that it finally became okay. My parents both died at 90. So this is during the depression. If you said you needed to go to therapy, oh, you're, you're in a straight jacket, you're in a mental yeah. hospital. Yeah. It, so it I never blame them for anything for not getting help. How could they? But you know what's interesting? When my mom passed, I was going through all her like little clippings of things and she saved everything. It was so cute. She had a bunch of Ann Landers and Dear Abby things ripped out about how to get along with your adult children, mm. how to be a better mom. And I was like, oh, my God, she was trying to work at it in her way. So That's you, sweet. Have, That's you really have a lot nice, of compassion yeah. That's for people really once sweet. you see who they are. Yeah. Surprised it wasn't C's for cunt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a poem she wrote. And it was really, <laughs> really touching. That's the wild thing, too. Like, they did not care about language. Like, my mother cursed really That's, great. I like that, though. She didn't say the C word, but she said everything else. I had to teach her how to give the finger. Because she didn't know how. So for a while, she was giving it like this. And I go, no, ma, you got to. That's such a great way It's to such do a it grandma though, like, thing. Yeah. Doing that. Yeah. Doing it that way. Like this way. <laughs> what the fuck? Or... I never seen anyone do that. My doing grandma, like that. She would it's an old like lady. This, but she would shake eventually. And then it turned into like this. Like, oh, oh, that's a good one. Oh, my yeah. God. But yeah, it's really interesting. I took a seminar once where they said the two real abracadabra ways to like change your life are definitely compassion and gratitude and if we do them both naturally that's like the sweet spot where mm -hmm. you can go wow i have compassion for the guy who cut me off because maybe he's going to a hospital and maybe that i was that guy before i don't, I don't have you that. Do that in your in in your of life of course Someone fucks fucks with you like that 100 and, and you go that guy could be doing yeah so, but damn i'm i used to just be angry and yelling at everybody and I go i gotta work on this or else i'm gonna get myself killed and also, I've always had rage everywhere but driving. I love driving. <laughs> I've never had road rage, but everywhere else I was a battle axe. So I said, you know what? I'm going to just work on this where I can go, 
let me have compassion for what he's going through because you never know. That's where I have most of my anger is when I'm driving. Yeah. Most people uh, say that. Yeah, yeah. And, the car. yeah but the thing are... is, it's the most dangerous place to uh, have yeah, anger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sure. Mike, grow the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's hard though. It is hard. Wow. Listen, uh, first of all, thank you so much for being here. I know we, we want to get you, make sure you get out of here. Um, we're hitting right at, right around time. We had one oh, more good. question that I wanted to ask, and yeah. you, it kind of perfectly sums up a little bit. You're talking about flicking people off, and and is there in a normal job when you retire, when you leave a job, mm -hmm. you could like tell your boss, you can go fuck you on your right. way out, you could kick papers. In comedy, there's not really a boss, right? There's nothing like that. So, is there anywhere, anyone? And I, I hopefully don't know the answer to this already, but do you? Is there anyone that you like publicly or would like to be like, you know what, fuck this person for this? Is there anyone that, that you like, fuck you for that? This club booker, this for that. But it's so weird because having worked on myself so much, yeah, I just. She, I literally, I really, to make a she I know, no, I did I'm a terrible, to shot. No, what the heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did a terrible thing to Conan O'Brien because I really shit on him on Ron Bennington's uh -huh. uh, radio show years ago because I did, I think 13 tonight shows with Jay, who was amazing to mm. me despite his flaws. And then there was one with Conan when he took over for a minute and I was so, and it wasn't Conan's fault. He was like, not good at that show. He was a deer in the headlights. He had to take over this iconic show and he literally didn't know what to do with me. Like I never did tonight show like this. I was at panel. I yeah. go, Rickles goes on as a, as a, as a celebrity, I go on a celebrity. So I would just sit there and make fun of yeah, yeah, guests, yeah. Goof, yeah. Kevin and all them. So it was all written. It was all scripted. They all approved of it, but Conan looked so uncomfortable with me that I literally went on Bennington show and I, was like free, not yelling or anything, but I was like, Unloaded. I was like, fucking Harvard asshole, fuck you. I go into to Harvard too for six weeks. I go, fuck <laughs> you, oh, oh, I'm so delicate. Like I was really cunty. And you know what? I feel bad about that because he was just doing his best, which if I had compassion at the time, I would have been like, oh my God, this poor guy, what he must be going through because it eventually didn't work out with that show for him. So, and by the way, it was my worst yeah. tonight show. It was super freaking embarrassing. And our chemistry just didn't work. I can't wait to look this up. Oh, yeah, it wasn't cute. <laughs> but that was probably, nobody really effed me over in the business. I think because I started late. I started when I was 30. So I already had some sense of what to say yeah, yes to okay, and no yeah, to, yeah. never do bringers. Like, just uh, be a more human. Yeah, a little bit. Than a Did you hit it pretty early? Did you start? No. no. I think I remember in the old days, they, Seinfeld would say stuff like, takes like seven years to really even know who you are. So I never had any rush to it. And then um, he was like, 15 years, you have one good special. And I was like, oh, okay, like I'm on track. So it started taking off around 40. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so I, it was fine. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's a, pretty that's, quick. 10 years anyway. It's not too that's bad. A, that's yeah. a good age to start becoming famous because you're not 22. You're not dumb in the head. You know what the hell's going on. Yeah. You're not going to get through. Uh, money's not going to get taken from you by agents. Yep. Probably promise yep. you this and that. That's a wild scared. thing. You're not scared to set up for yourself. No, Either and it's either. almost like I, I never, do you know I have the same manager and agent that I had right from the beginning? It's pretty impressive. Because no, I knew how to put a team together. Yeah. But I think when you're super young, you don't, yeah. you kind of yeah. grab. Mm -hmm. And I always say to the guys on my podcast, Losers with a Dream available everywhere, um, <laughs> to not sign with that first guy. Meaning like there's always going to be some club owner who wants to manage you or some minor booker. I said, you got to hold off for somebody who has some juice, but also your heart and has some warmth attached. My niece, um, the one with the big podcast, she signed with, oh my God, probably the biggest management company. All they saw was dollar signs, sure. didn't return her calls. And dude, this is me. I'm a recovering advice giver. <laughs> I just tell my experiences sure. now and see what happens. She literally was saying to me, oh, they're young, her and her partner. And they're like, what do we do? I mean, is it is it is it right that it goes like a month before he calls me back? And I go, dude, <laughs> my fucking manager will text me and go, call you in 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm sorry really. I wasn't yeah. there. I go, that's fucking ridiculous, but I can't tell them to yeah. fire him. Yeah. So I remember I spent a whole weekend with them. They do theater tours. I spent the weekend with them just listening and listening. I go, oh my God, they're please ask my advice, please. So eventually she goes, you know, he just lied about the amount on our contract with Spotify or wherever. She goes, what would you do? And oh, <laughs> shit. It's go time. I go, oh, the black pain under the eyes. You, you, let's get it. you would have laughed. I just go like this. I go, what would I do? <laughs> Are you serious? I ask yeah. what I would do. They're like, yes. I said, he's fired. 
now. And they go, how? Yeah. And I go, you, you go, give me your fucking phone. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I love doing so that. So you were I driving for sure. You I was driving. Over. I actually oh, was okay, driving. Right. I was right. Right. Okay. I'll never forget. <laughs> we're sitting outside of McDonald's, not bragging, <laughs> in Burlington, Vermont. They had a show at the higher ground. And I'm in the driver's seat. And one's in the front, one's in the back. And I just go, he's fired now. How do we do it? I go, you call your fucking business manager that I hooked you up with. He fires him. And you never return another call. And then you meet with my manager like, okay, they are now being treated like they deserve. So we can't be worried about. So in other words, advice giving is no good until you're asked. And then probably it's going to get ignored. But you guys don't be in a rush. Don't worry. That's me. You're a a rushy guy. It's okay. Don't worry. Because, you know, it sounds flaky and I don't care. No one can keep you from what you're supposed to have. So at the very worst, you're going to get a lesson. Suppose you only make it to, because I always had where I didn't care about money. I was like, hey, if I'm a freaking headliner at clubs forever, who cares? Looks stupid. 1500 a week. I don't care. Dude, if that's the only level you get to and you're like, oh, why didn't I make it big, big, big? You go, what's my lesson in not making it big? And how can I be grateful for what mm-hmm. I have? So I think it's all... You know, disastrous things. If you learn something, it's going to be fine. I've learned that you, money won't make you happy. Never. If you're poor and happy, you will be rich and happy. 100%. So that, that's why a lot of like artists and like, like the celebrities kill themselves because they think once I'll make it. I listened to Rob Lowe because Rob Lowe's sober. He said, yeah. oh, once I, I'm rich and famous, it'll be fine. That's why he kept drinking and drinking. And then mm-hmm. he's like, oh, it's that the booze was helping so, me or trying to help me. The only thing money to me ever buys happiness wise is therapy. If you can afford to go to therapy, that's really good. And that I put in the budget, even when I was, you know, not making a lot of money, I was like, freaking that 150 a week that happening first that comes up a lot uh, when we're talking about these different things that we talk about here is like talk to somebody oh my god it's huge to somebody. And especially guys like guys are just a lot of times like oh i can do it i can tough it out but it's like man just go just open up toughing just, out be allowed to be oh, open you know yeah toughing out is not a th- way to live life it just can't i mean and i you know i had that tough personality on stage mm. but i always said i'm like a tootsie pop soft on the outside hard soft on the inside hard on the outside and telling everybody to lick me so <laughs> well, i was that's like why when i first met you i was i was you try to lick her i tried to <laughs> yeah. well, everybody to does yeah. <laughs> but it was like not not shocking because I, I it was just like i walked away from being like she's so fucking nice like you, you that is nicer, my reputation, by the way, among like, comics, which cracks me up because there are some comics I fucking hated. And I'm glad they're all dead because every <laughs> all of my enemies except one are dead. And it's God's way of saying, Lisa. Give us a clip that'll you're right. viral. Well, no, I, I, I've said it on stage many times. You know, I would be asked on stage, who is your most... Um, Heated rival. You, no, no, your, your comics who... I, they always go, who are the comics who are nicest to you? I go, well, that's a huge list. I go, but there was three that are mean were mean to me, and you tell me what they have in common. I go, Patrice O'Neill, Greg Giraldo, Joan Rivers. What do they have in common? And they all yell, they're dead. I go, yeah, and so will Louis C.K. one day. Because <laughs> he's a mean motherfucker. Well, the thing is, because that's my experience with them, and I'm sure they're perfectly nice people to others, but I'm just like, just be nice. So when everybody always texts me like, oh my God, everybody says you're so nice in comedy. I'm happy about that. In my real life, it's harder. I'm sure. Yeah. But to other comics, like, why would you even be mean? No. It's like a- you're freaking, it, because I know comics who aren't nice to other comics is because they're threatened by them. And you see, yeah. you've seen it from the inside. You know, you've been through it and, and you know what it. Oh, it feels the terrible. Yeah. Joan Rivers was mean to you? Oh my God. Really? I was- she would go on Stern and say the crappiest things, but now that I've been pretty public about, I forgive her and stuff. It's because she was scared. Yeah, right. you're the, you're you don't want to see world. the next generation. So why do you think I'm so in support of like the Nikki Glazers and this one and that one? I'm like, oh my God, like why would you be threatened by someone coming up? I don't get it. Yeah. But I, I mean, I understand it, but I don't like it. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. She got to be who she was. And I'm sure she was nice to a lot of people. But I remember once my mother sent me a copy of Parade Magazine and Roseanne had said in the back, Oh, Lisa Lampanelli is my favorite new comic. I mean, that's the way to be. Yeah. But we all have blocks and stuff. So I've had a lot of snaps, a lot of things I haven't been good at. But at least I don't think it's come out to comics. 
Yeah, it, it was yeah, it was super fun. And this has been really fun, too. Yay. This has been awesome. Thank you, Lisa Lampanelli. Uh, every Tuesday, a new episode of Losers with a Dream. Available everywhere. Every YouTube, Spotify, iTunes. Uh, it's, it's, I've listened to it. It's really fun. The guys on the podcast are yeah, really fun, Yeah, we have a good too. time. Yeah. You make them wear shirts that say loser on well, them. Well, yeah, because guess what? definitely not their idea, yeah, by the way. No, I know how to market, okay? <laughs> I know what's happening with those guys. Uh, Lisa, do you want to pr- plug anything else other than the- What else the, I got going on? Yeah, I have a dog. She just yeah. 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 Seven podcasts. I almost- I almost she got two dogs. That's, that's, that's it. That's, yeah. that's, that's it. so funny. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, thank no, you, you guys so are cool. Thank, thank you so check much. Check it out on everything. And uh, Lisa Lampanelli. Yay. Thank you. That was so much fun. That was so fun.